trying to hi how are you so glad to see you and of course bada see how bright it is here well we are here at the golf conference and i'm gonna tell you something i i kind of feel like um like you remember superman how he had the clock can't be going in the telephone booth and changing clothes and then he had to just come out like you know he was just a regular man and then it's time to be Superman, he'd go back in the booth. Well, that's kind of what I feel like today because we've been here um, in the presence of the Lord and um, the conference, have, it has absolutely been awesome. Um, last night was a tremendous move of God and um, we're just blessed. You know, that, that reminded me of a scripture that I read um, in the book of Matthews when it started talking about um, it started talking about how uh, blessed uh, are ye who do hear and can see. Because they said, the Bible said that there were prophets and teachers of old that wish they could have seen what we've seen and wish they could have heard the things that we are now hearing right now. It's because the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And that's why I'm telling you that we are in a tremendous time for change. And um, I feel it and I know it. And uh, today is, you know, the 15th. And um, with some people said we are ending our 14 days, but no, this is the day that we start all over from the beginning. And now we're going 21. You got that? Because what are we learning here? What, it, uh, what is it that I'm trying to teach you? I, I'm, I'm trying to, to allow us to bond together um, as a unified force against the spirit of inconsistency. Did I just say something right there? Yes, I did. We have great ideas and there are many, many starters and we are excited about what we start, but God wants you to have the power of a finisher. He wants you to be able to finish the things that you start. And it's right along in here when we become uh, inconsistent about what he has told us to do. So we get ready to go on another journey. Um, and starting Monday, I'm going to send out a flash for those of you who have uh, left your email address and said, yes, you would like to pray. But what I want to do now, I want to help us join together our spirituality with our lives and show us how to maneuver in life by using both where neither one are suffering a deficiency. You get that? Neither one of them, because either we're really, really, really spiritual and then we are really, really, really sloppy about the rest of our lives or we are go-getters about life and God is on the back burner. I know people that, that, that sit in both of those arenas right now. I have, I have nieces and nephews that have gone to college and whatever, and it's like, my career, my career, my career. And then when you ask them about God, it's like, oh, I serve God in my own way. No, no. We don't have to diminish the fire of God in our lives in order to pursue our goals because you're going after the mind of God. So how can you leave it? If your dream was divinely deposited into your life and it was a divine download from God and it's now a mystery into the earth realm because he's using you to create something that's never been created before, then how do you not communicate with the mind that gave you the vision? How do you not have a relationship with that mind? And, you know, something happened today in the consecration service. Um, they were consecrating the bishops today and they got ready to proceed for the consecration and the spirit of the Lord just took over the building and everybody just began to praise God. Even the bishops got up and began to praise God. Bishop Jesse Delano Ellis said, out of all of the consecrations that I've been in, I've never seen the presence of the Lord take over consecration. But was that right? Yes, because he who has called us to service came into the service and confirmed that this was something that he was doing. So you need the presence of the Lord in your life as your constant witness. That's what the spirit of the Lord is. It is your witness. So how can you move into the things of God and you have no witness and you leave your witness behind? Who do you have to confirm that you are on the right track? I, I rely on that presence. I don't know about you, but it's like I got to have it. It's like crack. When I go and everything I do, I don't care if I'm going to, to, to work out in the gym. 
I pray and say, Holy Spirit, help me. Give me your strength to do what it is you're calling me to do, to give me an able body to fulfill the dream. Because some of us say, well, you know what? You don't know how hard it is. Dr. Bobham, you don't know how hard it is. You just, you know, stay consistent or, you know, I, I just go through so much. Well, let me just say this to you. Do you not know that the power of God is heavier than the power of the enemy? Do you know that the weight of the glory of God is heavier than anything that the enemy could ever do? Which means if you can't stand up under the works of the devil, you will never be able to handle the glory of God. You will never be able to handle the vision that God has given us because that vision is for his glory. And if what the devil is doing is too weighty, then you might as well throw in the towel. You might as well quit now because the glory of God is heavy. To carry the promise of God is no walk in the park. This is not a piece of cake. This is for real grown people. So children go sit down. This is for grown people, real grown people in the Holy Ghost. Grown people, like I said the other day, that know how to suck it up. Grown people that know how to pull your bootstraps up and say, I got to keep moving. And the only way that you're going to do that, I was reading something, and this is, this is leading me to where we're going next week, for the next 21 days. For the next 21 days, we are coming for your body, for your mind, and for your spirit, okay? We're getting ready to do what we can to try to pull these two together, all three of these together, because if not, you're operating like a schizophrenic. Your body is doing one thing, your body is living one life, your emotions is living another life, and your mind is living another life, and all you're doing is rotating in and out of them on a daily basis. And that's why sometimes you don't even know who you are. You don't even know what you're thinking. One minute I'm encouraged, I'm going to do it. The next minute, I don't know if I want to do it. Or not. And the next minute, well, the devil is busy and I don't think I can do it. No, we're going to come out of that. We're going to come out. That's too much movement. That's way too much movement. So we're getting ready to get it together. And I told you the way we're going to get it together, I read something that, that really, really shook me. It really, really shook me. It said, I'm going to give you the secret, and I'm not going to be on here long today because this is a nugget. I'm going to do this flash prayer, but the flash prayer is a prayer that is in the works. It is a prayer that is working. It is a moving prayer. I'm moving into it while I'm praying. I'm not on my face and then not doing nothing in the prayer. I'm in consistent intercession. Do you not know when you move in the things of God, you are in intercession? You may not be speaking in tongues. But do you not know that when God tells you to do something and you do it, you are in intercession? You are in a prayer mode? Dr. Martin Luther King said when he marched the Freedom March in Atlanta, he said, my legs became prayer. Yes, his legs became prayer. He may not have been able to say a word, but the fact that his feet stepped, his footsteps was moving in the direction that God had him in, his feet, his legs were in intercession. So we got to we gotta broaden our horizon. We got to broaden our thinking as to how we think about prayer. Prayer is not just da, 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 and you're done. Prayer is not, well, I'm, I'm just going to spend this hour with the Lord. Because you can spend an hour, like you said, with the Lord and then get up and do nothing he said. So did you really get a breakthrough in prayer? A breakthrough is a come through. A breakthrough is a come through. When I really get a breakthrough, I come on through it. I finish the course. Are you hearing me? So we get ready to put to death all of this fictitious talking about, I'm praying about it, I'm praying about it, I'm praying about it. No, prayer is movement. When you pray, something happens. Not only something, but when you pray, you happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when you pray, you happen. When you pray, things happen. But how does things happen? Watch this. If you're praying for God to give you a breakthrough about something, somebody got to bring that breakthrough. I want you to think about what I'm saying. Somebody got to bring you that breakthrough. God uses people. So if somebody got to bring you a breakthrough, that means prayer now is working through a person. So why? 
would you excuse yourself from that experience? So you can't pray. You can't pray for God to help you to lose weight, and you're still on the couch eating donuts. You can't do that. You can't pray for God to help you with your weight and help you with with your life. And I just feel like I'm so sluggish, and you sitting up with a quarter ice cream, no movement. You know what I read? I read something that was so powerful. It said that the body, as you are growing, and really hear this, as you are growing. The reason why you grow into who you are and you grow up with the faculties to be able to do the things that you have done thus far is because there are new neurons that are being developed as you grow. Now, why are these neurons being developed? These neurons are being developed because the body is constantly stretching like you may be this tall, two feet tall, but if you grow to be four feet tall in that process, the body was stretching. And every time there is physical movement in the nervous system, new neurons are, are, are produced. And it is those neurons that keep you with great agility. It keeps you being able to have quick movement. Are you hearing me? It helps you to be able to move quick and have good flexibility. Because guess why? The neurons are saying the reason why we're going to keep this body with agility is because this body is going to produce for us more neurons. And the more neurons it produces, watch this, it produces new cells, which means you stop aging. Wow, I just said something. Go on, give me some love. Give me some love. Give me some love. But everybody on there, everybody on there talking about, oh, let me tell you, if you're getting up going, ah. If you trying to stand up and you go, Ugh. if you if, if you if you stoop down to pick up something, you go, Ugh. your neurons dying. Your neurons is dying, boo. You you about to go up out of here. You can you doing the grunt. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. You doing the uh, and you doing the thing where you call your kids all the way from the basement to get you a glass of water and you in the kitchen, because stuff is starting to shut down on you. Yeah, your knees crack when you stoop down. Or if you stoop down to tell somebody something and you have a hard time getting up, your junk's shutting down. And I'm going to help you. No, I'm not going to be on Facebook trying to help you get to God and then you sitting there dying. No, God wants you to live a long life. It ain't time for you to go out of here. Stop all of that. Well, I'm too old and well, I'm too tired. No. Your body is ready to reproduce for you. Your body is ready to give you what it needs to help you to walk into your dream. Are y'all hearing me? Not with house shoes on in your business because your feet hurt. Because your legs is tired. No, they told me, you know, diabetes running my family. I went to the doctor. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell y'all why I lost all this weight. Now, well, you know what? You're going to have to stop. The doctor told me that day, I got to give you an insulin shot. I said, you're not putting that in my arm. I'm sorry. She said, Miss Bynum, your sugar is so out of control. If I don't give you an insulin shot, you could collapse out here. I said, but then that's going to be my reason to take myself home and clean out my cabinet and get all that junk out of my cabinet because I want to live. She said, well, you need to lose 36 pounds. You need to lose that in the next three months. I came back that I had lost 42 pounds. I said, no, I'm not the one, boo. I'm not taking the needle. I'm the, he delivered me from drugs. I'm not taking the needle. I'm not taking no medicine. You telling me that I could live a better life if I just lose weight? If I lose weight and watch what I eat, I don't have to be on medicine? The doctor have told you that? I'm talking to somebody right now, and I can reach through this camera and just grab you right now. The doctor done told you to put that bacon down, to put all that pork down, to stop eating all that foolishness, and every family get together. I know it. How does it sound, y'all? I know I ain't supposed to have this, but I'm going to go and get this little bit right here. I know I ain't. I'm, mm. Ooh, just give me a little slice of that sweet potato pie. I know I ain't supposed to have this. What do you sound like? Somebody whose neurons is not producing. How you know you're not supposed to have nothing and you have it? How do you know that you're killing yourself with a spoon and you continue? How do you know that you are killing yourself with a fork and you still do it? How do you, how do you, 
represent the glory of God with a broke down body. How do you do that? And don't give me that it's never too late for anybody. It's never too late for anybody to change their life. Never. And I'm here to help us all the way. You're going to fulfill your dream and you're going to do it healthy. You're going to fulfill your dream and you're going to do it with strength. You're going to do it with vitality. Your brain is not going to be all clogged and foggy and I can't hardly think. For all that stuff that's in your body that you need to purify yourself from. Are you hearing me today? Y'all mad? It's the truth. It's the truth. You, you won't even walk down the street. You don't even want to walk to your car. Be telling your kids, go get the car for me. And it's right there. It's right there. It says that if you stop movement, then guess what happens? The neurons settle where they are. And when they settle where they are, they start getting calluses on top of it. And that's when you start getting old. And that's when you start being able to not move. That's where arthritis come in. That's where knee snapping come in. Are you hearing me? But it said this, when you start moving, the neurons begin to say, oh shoot, they ain't ready to die. All right, let us start producing. Let us start producing something else. Oh, oh my goodness, she ain't ready to die, she moving? She in activity? She walking? She going to the gym? 30 minutes? Five days a week? Oh, have you ever seen people do that? And then all of a sudden you see them like two or three months later and you say, girl, you look good. Because the neurons decided not to kill her. They decided to produce. You can look your best right now. You can feel your best right now. Can I help you? Can I help you? Just give me some love and, and text yes if I can help you. Can I help you? Can I help you? Because you know it's going to be some brickhead people on here that ain't going to want no help. Because you know what? You really don't want change. Because you think money is change. You think the greatest gift that God could ever give you is your health and your life. And the greatest gift you could ever have right now is your ability to sit here. That's why the scripture said there would be some that were here and here and still can't comprehend. There would be some that would see and see and still not be able to do. Because the Bible said the enemy has warped their minds. And that's not going to be you. You're going to live. Now we're getting ready to get this thing together. We're going to start. We starting Monday morning. Let the church say Monday morning. And don't be talking about, well, I ain't fat. Well, get healthy. Because I done seen some skinny people that can't even go up the steps. I, I done seen skinny people that just tired all the time. No, you want to get healthy. You want your heart to be healthy. You want your lungs to be healthy. You want energy. I'm not getting ready to die. I'm not getting ready to die. I'm not, listen, a fork is not going to kill me. I told y'all I'm keeping hope alive. Now, if you want to go with me, because I got 19 pounds to lose, I'm getting ready for all the stuff that God has on the burner with my name on it. I got 19 pounds to lose. Anybody want to go with me? If you want to go with me, I'm going to send out a flash on Monday morning. After 8 o'clock in the morning, start looking for the flash. Because I'm going to let you walk with me into this place that I'm going to work out. I'm going to let you walk with me each day. And I'm going to send you flashes that said, I'm in the gym. What you doing? What you doing? Where you eating at? What you putting in your mouth? We getting ready to get it all together. Because it's time to stop the dumb stuff right now. It's time, or your children gonna lip off of your dream money. No, that's not gonna happen to me. God wants you to do it. He wants you to take control of your life now. I had one of my goddaughters that text me and said, you know what, you right. Cause I was on her about some stuff and she said, you right. She said, I'm doing it this time. I'm putting down all that sugar. I'm doing it this time, mother. I'm serious, I'm serious. I'm tired of being the way I am. And if you just help me, I promise you, I won't give up this time. So you know what? 
I'm ready. I'm ready to go to my next level. Are you? I'm going to be giving you tips along the way every single day. When I come on here at three with me, I'm not going to stop. 21 days. Now I'm giving you the 21-day challenge. This weekend, get it all out. Get it all out. Today is Friday. Get it all out. Get the pizza out. Go on and get you some ice cream. Get it all out. Be the devil for two more days. Let him use you for two more days. Because come Monday morning, that's a wrap. No more excuses. And this time when you touch it, I'm praying that God would let the spirit of conviction fall on you. I'm praying that you would be forget, Lord, when they go to get it, let it fall off the ice cream cone. When they go to eat it, don't let it taste like nothing. God, I want you to take control of their belly right now. I want you to take control of the taste buds. I want them to want it and just interfere with the traffic. By the time they get there, let the place be closed. I want you to let your ministering angels run interference right now because there are devils out there that's trying to kill the righteous. There are demon spirits out there that they know that these are the people that they can't get them to go off. They can't get them to sin. They can't get them to do wrong and hurt people. So the only thing that's left, God, is for the enemy to kill them with a fork and a spoon. And people think that it's a joke, God. But it's serious because if the devil keep killing us off and we're not healthy enough to praise you, we're not healthy enough to pray through, we get tired in the middle of intercessory prayer, then God, how and who would be left to bring down the works of the enemy? God, I'm praying right now that you let your people hear you, that being healthy is a part of being holy. God, I thank you for it right now. I thank you for every person that's watching right now. Y'all, I'm serious. I'm dead serious about this. Being healthy is a part of being holy. Yes, it is. It's making sure that the body is not defiled so that it has no activity and no movement. I'm talking to some of y'all right now. You know I'm talking to you. You know I'm talking to you. You keep on pretending. And then we want to put on all these body magics. Like you, got, Somebody gave me one of them things. I was like, get this thing off of me. I, how do y'all breathe in that type stuff? I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I was sitting up in church like this. Like I was a bodybuilder or something. It's like it had me gripped up. And the pastor's like, praise the Lord. And I was like, praise the Lord. And I was all... And when I stood up, I stood up in church like I was a bodybuilder like this. That thing had me hoisted. I was like, cut off my breath. And they tell me, you got to go over one more notch. And I was like, what? Baby, they took me over one more notch. And I, it felt like my eyes was popping out the sockets. It just felt like my lips were swollen. I felt like I looked like this. Because it was just squeezing the life out of me. I said, okay, I don't need no tiny waist that bad. <laughs> Hold up, miss me with that one. Miss me with that one. I'm just going to go the old-fashioned way, and I'm just going to work out. But listen, my I can't have my lungs exploding. It, I look like this in church, y'all. I said, I can't shout in this. I can't praise God in this. I can't yell in this. I can't holler in this. No, this ain't the way for me. And when I see people wear spandex dresses and stuff, I'm like, don't that hurt? It's like, I, I don't know how you squeeze yourself that tight. My God. <laughs> Woo! I just cracked my own self up. Y'all hear me, though. Y'all feel me. Y'all know I'm y'all sister. Y'all know, bam, I got you. I, it's, it's me and you right here like this. I love y'all. I love y'all. I want to see you healthy. I want to see you drop some pounds and get your groove back. You ain't old. You 57 years old. You're not old. I'm 57. I'm not old. I'm, I'm not old. I refuse. No, no, I'm not old. Mm -mm. I went in Dennis the other day and it was like, oh, you over 55. You could eat free in Dennis. No, uh -uh, I'm not eating free in Dennis. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I'm going to pay for my meal. Because you are only as old as you think you are. And in my own mind, I'm like 38. I'm not 57. I'm not going to be walking around here all pulled all over and all drawn on up to my... Whew, no. 
No. And I know it's some of y'all out there that don't want to be like that. And that's why I'm getting you together today. I'm getting you together today. Stop all that. Breathing like you got asthma and you just too fat. Stop it. Y'all gonna make me start screaming at y'all in this convention center. Stop that. Buying them opaque stockings because your legs hurt. You're not Mother Wallace. You a young woman. 50s is not old. 60s is not old. If you know how to work it. If you know how to work it. Stop all that foolishness. No, it's time to get back in the game of life. You done stop living to well, I'm just consecrating Jesus. No, you think he get glory out of you, you, your body being broke down? If you in the power of God and you an intercessor, then make your body speak in tongues. Make your body intercede on your behalf. Make your body do what it's supposed to do. Command your limbs. When I get in that gym and it gets hard, I say, stop being a baby. Stop being a baby. You hurting right now because you've been sitting in the same spot for all these years and you trying to get me old and I'm not going to let you. So I know you crying out right now because it's leg day. You crying out right now because when I box it, feel like my arm's on fire, but that's all right. Be on fire. Be thou on fire, but you're not getting ready to dry me up and kill me. You're not. I'm not going out of here until God say I'm going out. And when I do go out and the Lord say it's my turn, Y'all watch, I'm going to be in my casket like this. I'm still not going to be dried up and ugly. <laughs> no, I'm not. Y'all going to be like, she look good laying there. That's right. Because I'm a representation of the kingdom. I'm supposed to be the best. We're Christians. We're supposed to be, listen, we're supposed to be slaying all the time. All the time. Everything we do, we're supposed to be the best. We're supposed to look good. Our weave's supposed to be right. Our makeup's supposed to be right. The way we walk, the way we talk, the way we carry ourselves, the way we smell, the way we do business. Oh, y'all, we got to be Holy Ghost boss hogs. Come on now. We got to be. We got to represent. And the kingdom is on fire in the church and falling down in their body. And God is not pleased. And he sent me here to help you if you want help. Because I ain't going to judge you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to make you type in. When we come on here at, at, at three with me, I'm going to ask everybody, what did you do wrong? What did you do wrong? And just put it on that ice cream, cake, cookies, pizza. And if you didn't do nothing wrong, just say praise report, praise report, because we're going through this. And we're not going to stop. You're going to reach your goal. When I come in on Monday at three with me, I'm going to ask everybody, I'm going to take, take a minute and say, how many pounds you want to lose? Because you know what mother boy used to say, write it down. Because you always talk about your mouth. Like, I want to I wanna lose 30 pounds. Write that down. Write that down so you can go back and look at your own lie. Write it down so you can go back and look at yourself and say, you know what, I lied right there. Because I said I wanted to lose 30 pounds and I ain't lost one. But we going all the way this time. You with me? Because don't be hating now when I start really looking good and y'all tell me, ooh, prop is really... No, I want you to do that with me. Do it with me. I love you. I stopped. I could have said, tell them I said to look at an old tape because I've been at, at, at golf all weekend and I'm tired and I've been here ministering and pouring out and my body is tired and my throat is tired. So I'm not going to do at three with me today. But no, this is when you do it. You do it when you don't feel like doing it. You do it because you made a commitment. I had to do it because I made y'all a promise and I couldn't break that promise. I gotta sit here because I made God a vow that I would until he tell me to stop. I gotta sit here because he's been dealing with me about your health. He's been dealing with me about the whole person, about all of you, all of you, you matter, you matter. Your life matters. I don't want you walking through life half dead. I want you healthy. I want you whole. I want you to be able to produce the best you you have ever produced. Your latter days is better than your former days. Oh yes, your best days are ahead of you. If you just listen to what God has given me, and I'm gonna hold your hand, we are gonna do it together. 
Because some of y'all said, well, I just ain't had nobody to help me. Well, I'm going to be here every day. I ain't had nobody just to talk me through it. And, just, and I just get tired and I just start giving up. Well, I'm here. I'm here now. I'm right here. Mom, right here. I'm right here to help you. I'm here, I'm, a, I'm here to help you to order that turkey burger without the buns. I do it. That's what I do. I do that, sweetie. I order the turkey burger without the buns and put the mustard on there and just slice it and eat it. Come on.